Hey guys, Brian here from Liquid Concepts. So uh, we're doing another tips and tricks video. Thought we'd shoot one on a uh, doing a whole shotgun. So um, we've done a couple of videos on like shotgun uh, receivers, shotgun stocks, you know, barrels, things like that. So uh, kind of wanted to do another one on rolling an actual shotgun receiver. And so uh, kind of show you a few tips and tricks and things like that. And then that way you have a pretty good understanding of what you need to do if you have a shotgun receiver getting uh, getting coated in the hydrographics, whether it be a camouflage, a carbon fiber, a wood grain, whatever pattern, this should work uh, with the way that we do it. So there's a couple of different ways. Uh, we've already got our shotgun already taped off. We got it taped off on the inside here. So that way, essentially, we only have just the outside coated. And so what we're going to do here is, is we're actually going to roll this. And so um, we're going to use a little bit more film because we're going to go all the way in, like from here to here. So again, we're pretty much just wasting this much right here, but it does make something good to hold on to. And then, of course, we can just hold our finger in the back and then come in, roll it, we're good to go. Uh, it also makes more sense because uh, right in here, this is only gonna be the only line that the customer will ever see. So it's gonna look pretty much seamless. And so whenever they have the gun, they're up shooting it, you know, everything like that. Uh, everything is gonna be, look seamless. Uh, we might have a few little minor touch-ups in these areas right here because they may trap air. Uh, not really a big deal and um, so uh, we'll go ahead and get started and kind of go over a few things. So we got our camouflage pattern already here. And so what we're gonna do is, is we're actually going to just take and give ourselves a little bit of room, uh, about probably an inch or so on this side right here, just to make sure that we have enough room. And then we're just going to take this and flip it over. And so now we can pretty much cut this about right here. And so we've got this other piece right here that we probably could use if we probably scooted this over a little bit. Um, and so actually, if you look, you can get the stock itself, uh, the front foregrip of it, to actually fit right in here as well. So this actually works really well because then you're, uh, you're not just wasting a big section of the film. And then we can go back, uh, take our other stock, put it up here, take our... Um, our uh, barrel, get it dipped, and everything's good to go. So a couple of things you wanna make sure of before you cut any of your film. Always make sure that you make your camouflage go the same way. And so what I mean by that is, is that um, normally trees grow up and down, all right? They don't go left and right. Um, so what that means is that whenever your camouflage is on your gun, you wanna make sure that the camouflage is normally going like this. So that way, whenever the customer is holding the gun like this, the camouflage and the trees on the camo or the leaves or anything like that, it actually goes up and down with the actual, uh, the gun itself. And so uh, by doing that, like we could uh, go ahead and actually dip it just like this, but our pattern on this camouflage is actually running this way. And so again, on something like this, we wanna make sure that we always make sure that um, all of our camouflage is running the same way. So then that way we don't have any variations of the, the receiver is going up and down, but the barrel is going left and right. It looks good apart, but it doesn't look good together because then you've got mixed match uh, camouflage and that doesn't really go over very well with the customer. So um, we're gonna go ahead we're gonna lay this back out here and we're going to roll it over just like that. Make sure we got plenty of film, looks like we do, for both of these. And um, we're gonna go ahead and just cut it right across here. And so we'll pull that away. And then on this case, we can actually get pretty close to this one side right here. Give me a little bit more room on this dip for the, the next one. So go ahead and take that. So we'll set that off to the side. Looks like we've got this right here. And we're just gonna go ahead and cut the tape off of this. And so now we're ready to lay it down in the water. And so in this case, 
uh, let's see here. Actually, it goes like this. Um, so because this actually has writing on it, um, if the writing is upside down, whenever you're looking at it, that's the way that it goes down on the water. Not a lot of film does have writing on it. So in that case, you always just have to test it with your fingers, get your fingers wet, test it. The side that sticks to your finger goes down in the water. You can also test this, but if it does have writing and it's read backwards, then that's the way that it needs to sit down on the water. So we're gonna go ahead, we'll grab this, put it in the water and get started. All right, so we got that. We'll start our timer. Go ahead and pull this in and get this bunched in there, just like that. And just like that. So I left a little bit of room. Uh, it's not, it's not going to hurt us any, but we're going to go ahead and close that gap just a little bit, pull that in a little bit, and then that way we don't have hardly any stretch in the pattern. So grab some gloves on and then we will get started. All right, so the way that I'm going to dip this is, is I'm going to actually start at an angle like this and I'm going to go down inward with it and then continue to roll it all the way around. And so once we do that, so we got 60 seconds on the clock, I'll kind of go ahead and get this started and then we'll get all of that going. So I did two dips or two passes. I did two passes on this because one pass, it would have left me with some, uh, some gap on my top and bottom that I did not want. And so in this case, I was able to get the top and the bottom all completely glassed out, ready to go. So again, we're gonna check this, everything looks good. And so now what we're gonna do is, is we're going to come down at an angle like this and then come down like that and then slowly just start to turn it just like this. And so once we get to this point here, now we can start moving forward. And if you notice, I'm moving away from me and then the pattern is just rolling around it. And so now we can pull this back out and that is a very crisp, very detailed pattern. We have no stretch on it. Uh, looks like it did get all the way inside there, so we're going to have almost no touch-ups at all that I can see. Uh, oh, we have one little bitty touch-up right there. Customer will probably never know the difference. Grab some, uh, some of the ink off of the film, touch it up right quick. Nobody will ever know the difference. So, um, again, just to kind of give you guys a, a, a quick little um, reset on that so you can see a little bit better, we pretty much took and went down on this side and down on that side. Now one thing you want to make sure of is that this side right here did not go in the water. Alright, so we only put just this one side down in the water and then we went down to where our line ended up halfway. And so essentially all of this area in here back was in the water. And so once we got it in the water just like this, then we slowly moved it down we allowed the film to roll up into it, and then the whole time that that I'm holding this, instead of rotating it like this, I'm actually moving it this way. So then that way I don't actually warp any of the pattern, I don't stretch it, everything looks nice and vibrant on it, and it looks the way that it needs to be. And so um, production-wise, you'll probably never see something like this because you're doing one gun at a time. They're doing hundreds of guns at a time. So essentially, with them, they're going to take and go all the way down just like this, and then come back up, and there you go. Uh, you can set that up on a jig, do hundreds at a time, but for aftermarket-wise, this looks really good, and it's going to be something to where uh, the customer is really gonna enjoy that uh, a lot better just because they're going to have a better finish and a better overall look across the entire gun. So um, whenever you go to dip 
uh, your shotgun receiver, definitely want to keep that in mind on rolling it because of those simple facts. Now again, you could take that, you could go down just like that, dip it, and it'll still work just fine. Not saying it won't, but inevitably it's going to stretch upwards versus rolling it like that. You don't get a lot of stretch. It looks very nice. It keeps the pattern more crisp and it's just an overall better look to it. So whatever your skill level is, you can definitely do this just if you try it a couple of times and then you're definitely gonna get the hang of it and then you're gonna be putting out awesome results for any of your customers that want a dipped camouflage or even carbon fiber for that matter um, on their shotgun receiver like this. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know we always do. If you have any questions or comments, definitely please leave them below. We'd love to hear from you with any of your videos or uh, new videos that you'd like to see or just anything in general. We'd definitely love to hear from you. So I'm Brian from Liquid Concepts and we're making Hydrographics great again. Thank you guys.